I was very lucky to find Google and the smart people there, and I encourage each of you to find the smartest people you can and work with them. My third piece of advice is also on finding people, and it's to encourage you to find allies rather than adorers. At each of life's transition points, and you are at one now, new friendships, new connections, and new social circles emerge. And in those moments, you can choose. You can choose to surround yourself with adorers, or you can choose to surround yourself with allies. Adorers are people who fawn over you, who will point out everything you do well and make you feel great about yourself. And as a result, they're very easy to be around. The downside of adorers is they don't ever tell you when they think you're screwing up, when you're misprioritizing, or when you're making a mistake. Instead, I encourage you to seek out allies. Allies will tell you when you've done something well, but they'll also be honest with you when they feel you are making mistakes or not living up to your potential. This is especially important in the job market. Work for someone who believes in you and invests in you. Someone who wants you to be better and will be honest with you all along the way. I've been blessed with a number of wonderful allies along the way. My parents, various teachers, and at Google, Eric Schmidt, our CEO, Larry, Sergey, Craig, my boss Jonathan, just to name a few. These allies have all given me a lot of responsibility and a lot of feedback on how to improve. Find peers, managers, and leaders who challenge you to be the best you can be and then help you achieve it. Okay, the next thing that is important to find is courage. Courage to do things you aren't ready to do. This is probably the scariest piece of advice I'm giving you today. Do something you're not ready to do. My life has been shaped by four major decisions to do things I wasn't ready for. As a naive 18-year-old from Wisconsin, I moved 2,000 miles away from home to go to college. As a disheartened biology and chemistry major, I changed my major to symbolic systems when I could barely describe to my parents what symbolic systems was, let alone what I could do with such a degree. I moved to Zurich, Switzerland for a summer to do research, despite the fact that I don't speak any German. And in 1999, when I was graduating with my master's, I chose to work at an unheard of eight-person startup with a ridiculous name. Each of these four decisions put me in entirely over my head, each in different ways. The last one, the startup, particularly so. In 1999, the search engine market was fractured across about 12 different players. Infoseek, Lycos, AltaVista. Most of these search engines were long gone before you all hit puberty. But the basic gist was that in 1999, the world didn't need another search engine. Yet when I interviewed at Google, Larry and Sergey were determined they could change the world through search and laid out a vision around how. At the end of the interview, Sergey handed me a business card. A business card printed with a dot matrix printer on the cardstock equivalent of typing paper, where if you looked closely at the edges, you could see the perforations where he had torn the cards apart himself. And he told me to get back to him. I went home and contemplated it. I could already imagine being the brunt of all family reunion jokes when I was 40. Let's face it, the company name itself is like a punchline. I could hear my parents already. When Marissa graduated, she went to a company called, get this, Google. In my mind, I gave the company about a 2% chance of succeeding, which is about 100 times what I would give the other startups I was talking to at the time, but I still realized we would most likely fail. The turning point for me was when I realized that I would learn more at Google trying to build a company, regardless of whether we failed or succeeded, than I would at any of the other companies I had offers from. Doing something you aren't ready to isn't comfortable. For me, and I assume for many of you, it gives you that uneasy, upset feeling in your stomach, that sense that this time you may have gotten too close to the edge. But in pushing through that discomfort, you'll learn a lot more about yourself. You'll learn to do something you didn't think you could do, or you'll learn where your limits are. Either is valuable. It's important to push through that uneasiness, though, because in that moment of finding your courage, you really grow and you really reach. I'll say it again, do something you're not ready to do. My next piece of advice is to find places where you're comfortable. This may seem like the antithesis of my previous point, but it's not. You can't achieve your potential or change the world if you're shy or self-conscious or inhibited. Believe it or not, I am very shy. 
I don't like meeting new people, going to parties, or mingling with strangers. Growing up, I was always the kid in class who knew the answers and never raised my hand. Interestingly, at Google, my colleagues are floored by this observation because there, I'm not shy at all. What's different? I'm in my element. I'm surrounded by people who are just as geeky as I am. They're interested in the latest gadgets, the most intriguing snips of JavaScript, where technology is going, and how those trends might shape our future. Passion and an amazing neutralizing force. By being comfortable in your environment, you're freed of your insecurities and the things that hold you back but don't need to. Find places where you're comfortable. My last piece of advice isn't about helping you find things, but rather how you can help others find things. It's also an observation on how the world and companies are changing in the information age and how best to facilitate innovation and creativity. My advice, be an information fountain. Information used to be scarce and expensive, and power came through hoarding it and brokering it. Today, it's just the opposite. Power comes from sharing information. Tell everyone everything. The more valuable, the better. Sharing leads to connections. Connections lead to co collaboration. Collaboration leads to creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation are what change the world. Lack of sharing can kill innovation in big companies, where division turn, divisions turn into information fortresses. They compete with each other and end up guarding information from each other as zealously as they do from competitors. Everyone loses as a result. Help others find their way by sharing the information and ideas you have. In conclusion, we live in a world with perhaps entirely too much information, opportunity, and choice. And in that world, finding the right piece of the puzzle becomes increasingly hard and increasingly important. I wish I could make finding passion, courage, smart allies, or places of comfort as easy as a Google search. I can't. But that said, I'm very optimistic that all of you will find your courage, your voice, and your role in changing the world we live in for the better. Thank you, and good luck.